All right, so now we're going to finally move to what we're doing. Now, this stuff is the OCT I was telling you about, an OCT compound. It's made by Tissue Tech, and this is the product number. You can get it at any time you want, okay? I have two types of that, and, uh, because we were trying to type out. And this is one type. Uh, it's called Cryogel by Instrumentics, and this is OCT. Okay, they aren't very expensive. You can order your own. But I will give you this if you want to try it out. I think it's probably as good as OCT, but um, I, I don't know. It's up to you. Tell Dr. Wong. If you want to try this, um, go for it. If you want tissue tech, I think I would la ask you to order that one yourself. We, okay. Because we use a lot of that. Okay. But you're welcome to have all of this if you want it. And it may be good stuff. I just, I don't know. They say it's good. Maybe one thing may be the same as another. I don't know. What would we have to order if, if we order anything? The, the OCT. The, just the OCT. And then um, right now, I don't know, how many sections are you going to be cutting? I've got 16 samples. So, so right now, slides. I think I'm okay on the uh, blaze because I've got backup. Mm -hmm. So I think you're okay on blaze as long as you don't do you use up a whole thing of blades, which is quite a few, you might want to order blades. They're pretty expensive, but if you don't use up a whole one, it's mm -hmm. probably good. And then slides um, are in here. And um, if he's going to be doing this, he might want to order his own box of slides. I think he should do that. So this is how they come. Here's the product number, and this is the box. So you can do that. Okay. But, but until you uh, get them, you can use some of ours. Um, C W R North America four eight three one one dash seven zero three. That's the product number. <laughs> okay. All right. And it's phone number one eight hundred nine three two five thousand. Okay. So, All right. So you get a whole box of them, and so I would recommend getting yeah. those. And then you're going to need it, uh, probably cover slips. So I would or, uh, suggest getting those. Okay. And Corning, is there a 1-800 number on it? Or is it the same people that sell the slides? Um, I got them for VWR. The VWR sticker, maybe on there. Or that's where I got it. Was it Fisher or VWR? Um, let's see, a catalog number. I think it's VCAP. Isn't that it? Oh, there it is. Phone. Oh, that's Fisher. Yeah. Yeah, Fisher. Okay, I'll have to put Now, he may that. not want this kind of a cover slip, but we get it because it's made like this, and it's especially uh, good for um, the confocal microscope downstairs, mm -hmm. which means you can use it with any microscope. Okay. But there are different kinds of cover slips and different needs. Okay. It's up to you what you get, but this is what we get. Okay. And you definitely should get your own cover slips and and slide. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Now, these slides um, are, are particular slides. They're not just uh, any old slide, like you would use, say, in the biology department or whatever, right? Um, I mean, the you know, the labs down here. These are, the these are special slides. They're, you'll notice they say Super Frost Plus. And the reason we buy these is because they have a coating on them that makes tissue adhere to it better so that when you're doing a minute chemistry, the tissue doesn't fall off and glide, which happens a lot. So they're, they're, if you look at the slide closely on the bottom of it, there's a plus plus. Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about. They're super frost plus plus slides. It means that it has a ion or something on it that causes the tissue to adhere to the slide tightly. Okay. There's a little coating. Now there's a right side. Mm -hmm. That's where you lay. And there's a wrong side. Okay. okay. So you don't want if you put the tissue on this side, it doesn't have a coating. Oh, I got you. Plus, you can't label, <laughs> but they do that on purpose so you put the tissue on the right slide. Okay. On the right, yeah. Okay, so that's all the parts that we need to know about. Now what you do is you grab yourself, and uh, we have quite a few of these. 
but you probably want to order those because you're going to have lots of these. We so this is the storage thing I told you about archiving. So you see these things are filled with all the flies that we can do it. So the archiving system that we came up with is this. You can buy these little things from uh, from either Fisher or VWR. And then what we do is we buy which are micros microscope slide holders. And they're little index cards. And then you just put your slide in here and it'll have what it was that you did. So here's our identifier at that time, the date we did it, and what's going on in this slide. Okay. Now the drawers are great because now you can put the slide identity there and then we have our antibodies, all the different antibodies we've used, so we can go back in time and say, oh, I did an H&E stain. How'd that H&E stain look back there on 12204? And there it is. We can pull it and look at it. So that's how we keep track of that. Other people, like I said, he had these big map drawers and then these nice little slide holders, and they were all laid out there instead of in boxes, but that wouldn't have worked for us. We don't have enough room. I wouldn't recommend keeping them this way because it's a nightmare. And I'll show you the nightmare we have right here. These all have to be filed. And if you get behind, <laughs> you know, uh, where is it now? The one you wanted? Mm. Yeah. Unless you have a good memory and know. I know what's in that stack, but oh man, nobody else would know what's in that stack. The other thing we buy are these labels. Uh, in the old days, we didn't have them, but you can buy these. They're little uh, computer printed labor labels. And so you can see there's that system, RPNRA1051 Spring 04 Gap 43 at a 1 100 dilution um, detected with DAB on 62706. It's all on there. Okay. But if you don't keep up with it, then they look like this, which means, uh-oh, well, we didn't do that, and then we got to go back to the notebook and remember everything, and that's not real helpful. It would have been nicer to get this done, but we didn't get it done because we got busy, and I guess we're not planning on publishing this, so it doesn't matter anyway or something. This is the publisher website. Okay. <laughs> but that's got to be taken care of someday when I get time. So I would not, I would recommend that you buy some of these sleeves is you need them for day to we the reason we use them is for day to day work. Like uh, you just had one that I don't know where it's at. Yeah. So you need this to dry the slides in, to transport the slides in, but then what Yuko is gonna have to do is put the little labels on it, put them in a card and put them where she can find them again in the order. So you're be, you're doing a PCNA which would come in under P, right there. P, C, and A. That's okay. counted, different one. Okay. So it would go in this drawer if there was room, but actually I think it, there's no more room, and see this needs to be relabeled. This goes B to O, O to, and that doesn't go O to P. This starts at P and goes on. They've got to be relabeled. So yours would go in here where it fits, but we're running out of room, so we have to move this thing back, and, and then there'll be enough room. And then when that fills up, we can move them all forward and start using this drug. And so that's what this is. I have forgotten. This goes here. It broke off. That's why. So that had nothing to do with that. Okay. So that's our uh, way of doing storage. So I don't know if you're interested in this. Then there's another thing we do, uh, depending on the kind of stain that you do. We also use these. These, well, no, this is where we put our cryo sections, by the way. So you need this little box number as well. Okay, so if you want to do it, yeah. If you want to do it this way, you need these boxes. These are called Ted Pellas? Or is it order from Ted Pella Company? Company? I think I did order them from there. Okay. Now, what's neat about these is these are slide holder boxes. And these go. Yeah, he has a few of those. He, these go in the freezer, so this yeah. is what happens to this. 
Um, at first, you think you're never going to do this. Sometimes I'm telling you, if you plan to do this for a long time, I, I think see, they start adding up and you save everything. Mm -hmm. So we put all our sections that haven't been reacted in these boxes, and then we label the boxes. And then that way we can come in here and we grab our dry section and pull out the one we're going to work with today. There it is. Okay. So that's why we have these boxes. Now, when you put them in here, you, these things you don't want them to dehydrate. So that's why I have them in a in a really uh, heavy uh, uh, plastic Ziploc bag. There's no oxygen in there, and then that keeps them from drying out. You don't want these things to dry out. Okay. Now let's say you do a uh, fluorescent stain, which you might do. Then you keep those in here. You can come by this way. So if you do 50 or size 3 or something like that, I ordered one of those, put it in a freezer, and now these are all reacted with uh, whatever the uh, fluorescent dye was. And they're all stored here. So that's our way of saving slides and, and doing what we got to do. There's another use for these sleeves. They're really handy. Okay. They're really handy. So we're finally getting into cutting section. All right, you have to have a special pencil. You have to order these to get them. You know, I want to get them for These are Ticonderoga 3H's. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you're going to be cutting tissues, and you, made it, you make up your mind what you want to cut, and you set these up ahead of time. And this thing is going to hold your uh, sections as you cut them. So, for example, let's say we're going to do um, uh, L or 275, and this is uh, adipose. And we're just going to put section 1, 2. And then you just get all your slides ready, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or whatever, or you can label them afterwards. So after you've made up your decision of what you're doing and how you're going to do it, you can put that there. And then you're sitting here. Sorry, how you doing? You're sitting here, got your slides all lined up there, and you're going to be doing it. Just grab your thing, you're going to cut, collect, pop it there. Next one, boom. Next one, so you're all ready to go. That's how you do that, okay? So, rather than do all the labeling, you're going to have to get your uh, block in there, and it's going to have to get to the temperature of the instrument. Remember, it's only at uh, minus 20 in there, or it might be minus 80 if you get it out of the minus 80. So we want it to get to the temperature that's in here. Okay. So that's going to take about a few minutes. Plus, you're going to have to glue it onto that uh, chuck holder uh, with OCT compounds. It's going to have to freeze on there, and that's how it sticks on there so that it won't fall off when you're cutting. So best to get your block out, let it freeze, label your slide. By that time, that's ready to go and ready to cut. So the next thing I'm going to do is get this. In parafilm. Notice that the second wrapping has the label, and this is pretty ugly because this label is almost coming off, but we know that this is LZ17 uh, white adipose tissue. So, what I should have put on here was the identifier for the animal, which was LZ17 white and as well as tissue. Okay? Somewhere in a book, somewhere in the lab, I know that I've cut this before. I need to go get that notebook and then this won't be one and two. 
because it will be however far we cut. If it was important tissue, we would start from that number and end. Since I'm not interested in this anymore, I save these for practice. I'm not going to be rigorous about how I identify today. Okay. We're just going to use it for practice. So, um, these are all practice. And we're just going to set them up. You doing all right, you Cola? You look like you're starting to not feel good again. You all right? You're fully recovered. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Now. Oh, it's important to wear gloves whenever you. You know it's cold in here, so I'll leave that up to you. Yes. Okay. You might want to wear gloves. I'll probably be putting them on, but in terms of. And in terms of touching that, I need to have them on because I don't really want to get the OCT on me. So, yes. I mean, that's, I don't know that the OCT hurts, but I would suggest it. Now, we're going to save this. And we're going to save this because we want to put it away later. Okay? All right. So, I guess I should put them. So I need to freeze them to where they look like that. They're going to look like this. And notice that the the size of this is the right size for that block. This would be too small. Okay? That wouldn't work. So that's what we're going to do is put it on there. Now, what I want you to observe is, you see, there's the tissue, the little piece that's in there. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's how it looks in there, and you know that you're ready to cut tissue. Okay. So. Um, we are going to set that up. I'll get some gloves on. Okay. Okay, so you put a little pad there, and then you just pop that in there, and you let it freeze. That's it. But you didn't have to put as much as I did. All right. Now, there you go. All right, and then you keep this closed to let it do its thing. Now, you'll notice that it's got a slant. It's not... Yeah. It's got a slant. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because when it was cut, this thing isn't straight up and down. It's laid back. Now, this can be oriented, and that manual will tell you how. You see, this, this lever can be moved, 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 that lever can be moved. You can make this go this way, that way. You can make this go this way, that way. You can move things so that the orientation is however you want. What I was telling you about the old factory, um, if you made it like this, you would have one level here and one level here. That would be stupid. So you want yours like this. Now, by doing it this way, it just cuts it nicer than if you just went straight up and down. But that presents a problem because if you don't cut all your sections in one day and you come back, if you don't put that back in the same orientation, it, the top part will get cut and you're going to screw up all your tissue. So you need to put some kind of a mark on it, if you can, or uh, remember in some way where the top was when you do it the next time. Now, this wasn't marked, but it should have been, so that you know what, what position. Now, notice there's a line there. So what would have been handy is if we would know where the mark on here is to match up with the mark on there. But I'm going to guess that it goes in that orientation because that's where the slant is going. Okay, remember, that needs to be fully opened to get this in here.
And if I remember right, this thing has, uh, has see that little divot? Well, if I'd have remembered that, I'd have put the part that I wanted up relative to that so I know where to put it. But I want this part, so uh, hopefully it's going to go in. I hope it's not relative to the divot, because if it is, then i got a problem. I just have to take it off and put it back on again. Why isn't this going in? There we go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So if I put it there, it's going to cut it weird, right? So it's clear that it's got to be up there, right? Now, this doesn't look good. See that? It's not nice and white like that. That means it's got freezer burn type stuff on it, and that's not good. You don't want it to look like that. But this is old tissue that we've been practicing with, so I'm not worried about it. But I wouldn't like it if it was the real deal we were going to do something with because of that. Why do we have this? Because when you're done, in order to keep that tissue from drying out, you put a little spot of this oil on there, let it freeze, and that prevents drying. So that's what tissue block oil is. And when we're all done, we'll use that. Okay, now I need to get over here. See, that is too close. If I let it go through, it's going to knock that thing off the block because it's too big of a chunk that it wants to cut. That's when I have to use this to make it go back. Trim. No, the, actually, it doesn't have to trim to do this. This has nothing to do with trim, but we are we 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 won't be trimming as much as that. We just want this to go back. I don't know why it's not. Is it? So, uh, let's uh, lock the and then try. There it goes. This needs to be locked for that to work. Is it going You can back? hear it. Yeah. Can you hear it? Okay, now if I want to stop it, i just hit that. Now let's try it. Unlock it. Now, see that? Okay, I went too far. <laughs> so now what I do is I hit this, and it might come forward without being locked. Okay? Is it coming now, forward? It did. Now, see, I'm almost there. In fact, I, I'm there. Okay? Now, well, this could go on for a while. This is where it'd be nice if we could motorize the trim and do it at 30 instead of uh, 10, because it would come forward faster, wouldn't it? So in other words, if I made it 100, it'd go really far forward every time you're advancing 100. We don't care if we advance 100 because we're trying to get here fast. Now, I wish I didn't have to do that. I wish I could do it this way. And I don't know why it's not working. Hmm. Do you still have to keep turning that? No, it's supposed to do it automatically. I know. So when the guy comes out, I'll have to tell him that the automatic doesn't seem to be working. <coughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. So, we won't worry about it. How do we turn off? I forgot how we turn off the motor ride. Can we turn it off? We want to turn off motor ride. Stop. I don't want this anymore. That works. That works. We want to turn this off. Let's do it. Oh, let's try this. Why is it going?
it's a little manual app, and now it's going to make it go into the window. Oh, motorized is off. Thank you. All I want. Oh, All right. I thought it was. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is just use this. The jerky movement that it is, it's going to be hard to make a good section today because, see, it has this thing that's yeah. continuous. Do you want me to do that for you? Unfortunately. No, you got to learn to do this yourself. So. Okay. Um, we'll just have to do the best we can do today. So you see, the farther back you are, the farther, the no, longer you're going to have to do this kind of thing. Um, maybe I can make this go There we go. Okay. What you do when you start is you need to keep this clean. So we're going to keep cutting until we get a nice full piece. This is called facing the block. <laughs> now we have it at minus twenty eight and minus twenty three. I hope it's a good temperature, but it might be too warm, or it might be too cold, I don't know. Okay, when we finally get to a point where we're happy, with, then we're going to start collecting the sections. But right now, this would be on the set on this slide, but this wouldn't. And if this was real tissue, I wouldn't, uh, this would be horrible to be wasting all that tissue, but since we're practicing, we won't worry. And this is at 100? All right, I'm going to start collecting, even though this part up here I'm probably not getting. So this is where the work comes in. Now, you take these brushes, and as you come down, you grab this piece. Oh, I didn't sink it off of a hundred. That would be important. Okay, now. We're going to throw away the first one because it's going to have to get used to the idea it's now cutting at 10. Second one ought to be good. about the width that you're going to have. And now this is where we're going to determine if the temperature is too cold. See how that broke right there? Uh -huh. That's because it's hard to uh, distinguish between the OCT and the tissue. 
and I suspect this temperature is wrong. Okay. Okay. I could go look it up, but I'm not going to look it up because I want us to find out empirically what works best. Um, this temperature, I think, works good for olfactory, but as I recall, maybe too cold. That's what I meant by chatter and all that stuff. And you make holes, and that's the hard part about sectioning, getting that right. So let's change this to, um, let's bring this up to 20. At the beginning, 29. Yeah, but we're doing a different tissue oh. in general. We haven't done that in a while. I could go look it up. I said I'm going to play around. Because I want you to see on your own um, what the problems are. So let's go way up. So it turned it off. We're going to go to 2020. So now we got to let it um, warm up for a minute. And so we're going to let this warm to 20, let this warm to 20. If it's too warm, it'll start melting on the block. Mm -hmm. Too cold, it'll be torn apart. So we're going to be somewhere in between here, but... Try we're trying 20 to... For some reason in my mind, it sticks that we that were working it at 18. Oh no, by what you've done here. Just set it 